Hello everyone, this is Bench85, and welcome to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. I'm hanging out here with Dilberry, and he's just kind of giving a once-over of the station here, enjoying the view of the moon behind, making sure everything here is as expected. Um, I don't know if I actually showed you guys what I've assembled so far. So this is the extra power module here. This is the main power module, which is the Russian, I forget the name of it, offhand. My uh, cheat sheet is not very well organized, apparently. But this is the main power unit of the space station. This will be a part that stays. Back up a little bit here. Uh, this is a node that's on that one. And then of course we have, if we go up here, we have the one habitat. You know what? I think I need to spin around. Is we are gonna get we a sunrise. Nice. Okay. So anyways, where were we? Spin back around, buddy. Uh, the habitat, which I should actually pull my cheat sheet out here. So the Russian one down below here is Vesda. And then this one is Zarya the main habitat and uh, let's see this guy would be our first node which is the unity node which will have a couple things on it but this is the main one of the US uh, portions I guess he doesn't need his lights on anymore okay just checking I wanted to make sure that the electricity apparently is not affected by the lights cool so yeah that's basically where we're at here with the space station uh, now that I have it assembled the way I want it to. And you know, I thought I'd take the time to just talk about a little bit of current events, although I know current events isn't the smartest thing to talk about always. There we go, that's how I turn them. As we look over the station here. Uh, but I thought something important should be talked about. The fact that I was actually going to record this episode a couple nights ago, but instead released a portal episode. Is the, if you will, the accident that happened, uh, one of our launches here, the NASA, if you've been following, uh, Orbital was launching their fourth mission, I believe, of their Antares uh, class rocket, and unfortunately it had an engine malfunction of some sort. Uh, they haven't specified what it was yet. But anyways, they had to abort it. It blew up not far off the launch pad. And took out, I guess, from what I heard, uh, some of the launch system there. I mean, the island where they were doing it off of Virginia uh, has been damaged partially. So they are going to have to do some repair work make sure I don't hit that solar panel but the reason I wanted to bring it up is as we're playing Kerbal Space Program here uh, you don't think so much about the fact that you know we're playing around with rockets here and I know I'm in sandbox mode which means that there's not a lot of penalty for you know errors that you would make I can revert stuff the newer versions of Kerbal Space Program will let you go more of a hardcore mode. And uh, I probably will do something like that in the future. Um, that should be a hatch I can grab onto, isn't it? No? Apparently not. And so that whole idea of, of it being dangerous isn't really around there for... Uh, Kerbal Space Program and you know we there's a lot of rocket launches that go on with NASA uh, SpaceX all the other companies that are involved obviously of the Russians launching their progress rockets to the space station and uh, what else the European Union um, as well and things usually go right but as a space travel uh, things can be dangerous at times so I just wanted to bring it up and, and remind people that you know I might be having fun here and 
enjoying the different missions I have here and even watching the rockets explode at times and you know as much fun as it is just to remind yourself that things are dangerous and and luckily we found out um, the mission was a what they consider a critical uh, critical supply mission meaning they were taking food water oxygen stuff like that to it uh, it was unmanned um, there was some science experiments on I guess that were headed up but it's all things that can be replaced uh, they obviously have plenty of supplies up there and actually the Russian uh, progress launched like 12 hours later sending up supplies and SpaceX is supposed to launch in December I believe for resupply runs so no problem as far as issues with getting supplies so it'll be okay um, here we go I just thought I'd bring that up and talk about it but this is our mission for today yes this rocket actually you know what <laughs> this is not this is our s last mission and there's a really really awesome payload in here that you don't know about so don't read this up here at all <laughs> all right tell you what I'll get our actual mission on the launch pad and I'll be right back all right everyone we are back right there it sits ready to launch on the launch pad but I'm having to watch here on the map screen because our mission is to attach another piece of the satellite to our Cygnus satellite which has been flying here so in order to do that we need to align the launch pad with the orbit that way we don't have to try and shift things around and the important thing to notice is which way it's going Cygnus is going up this side down this side so that means at launch we need to be going south make sense so I'm just sitting here kind of warping ahead trying to line this up the reason we're adding this is we've got a contract per se with another company that has a sensor they'd like to test out okay that's pretty darn close that sensor would be or that company would be Keythane that's right guys we have a Keythane I really did not check this should probably go right about there okay and we are almost dead on that little bit we can adjust for so as always throttles up all the way to 100% SAS on 3 actually I'm going to drop throttles a little bit 3 two, one, launch. That wonderful KW rocketry rocket engine sound. Okay, we have some very, very crazy spinning. Holy cow. Not sure exactly what's going on here. We definitely have a problem. We have an issue. I'm not sure if it's the shape of the. No, well, that should be properly shrouded, but I think we have a launch failure. Something is definitely, definitely wrong with this rocket. So as with any proper abort, we do not want it landing on the launch pad. I don't know if I can get this sucker to go over. It is fighting me tooth and nails. Trying to get it to head out towards the ocean. A 
We'll do launch. Fire the engine again. But this one is going to go down. Here we go. Crash landing. Well, that would be our first mission failure. Back to the drawing board, see if I can get this working. All right, guys, welcome back. I'm not exactly sure what was doing it, but I decided to switch to the 2.5 meter version launcher that I have. It's a little bit overkill for this, but uh, well, it should work. So three, two, one, fire. <laughs> We're gonna tip it over just a little bit throttle than that. We gotta be careful because this thing's got a whole lot of thrust. We can uh, start to go into issues with the dynamic pressure if we're not careful. Going up pretty smooth. sucker like you wouldn't believe our apoapsis is quickly climbing but I think we've got it under control now no st stalling at the moment I'm gonna keep dragging the sucker over get an apoapsis of roughly about a hundred actually here quick change Cygnus is at 300,000 so we got a ways to go up so I'm actually gonna pitch it all the way over to here I'm gonna blow the shroud I love that part. So now it's a simple matter, I'm gonna cut it right there, of uh, setting ourselves up for an approach and I'll come back when this guy is ready to rendezvous and dock. All right guys, here we are. Um, I already decoupled this little device that I have here, the little satellite from the uh, launch stage. All of this is a little RCS powered. It's got a little RCS tanks here and the big scanner up on top here. Actually seems to, uh, to move around pretty good. So I guess what I need to do here is orient myself correctly like I normally do for a docking here. Very, very quick. I'll tell you that much. Like it moves very quickly. Okay. Now what we want to do is that seems pretty balanced. We're gonna move over this way. Like I said, lining up our green to the center. I'll figure out rotation at some point. When I get closer, simple docking maneuver, as always. Figured I'd show you guys it though. Okay, slow it up just a little bit. We are almost lined up. Okay, yep. 
Just making sure that our orientation was correct here. For some reason it didn't look right. Oh, almost there. Almost there. Slower up, slower up where we are. Going to run into it otherwise. I want this thing to be oriented over here. Like so. Still look really good on our alignment. I'm doing everything by here, so let's switch over to precise precision mode. Oh, didn't want to grab that. Yeah, it looks like we're lined up pretty darn well. Keep it right near the center, like so. And looks like we are going to line up almost perfectly. In three, two, one. Connect. Bingo. All right, so Cygnus has an upgrade. Nice. And the panels work pretty well, looks like. Okay, it is being uh, shown. So this is how Keythane sensor works. If we go to orbital mode like such, you will see that if we go here, you will see a grid show up on the planet. See it down there? And as it scans, and I'm looking for, let me speed it up, there we go. There's our scanning point. It will fill in this grid here, like such. And so we'll just continue going around and around. And unlike ScanSat, you actually have to be on the satellite that you're scanning for. And I'm looking to see if we were to possibly, you can see here, there's uh, showing data. So maybe we can hit a keythane pocket and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Maybe should be have a different sound to the tone. Pretty, pretty, please. That's about the fastest I can scan, I think, without missing a pocket. We have zero luck here. It's much easier to see it on the night side of the planet. I usually hit something on Kerbin here. But anyways, the purpose of Keythane is that you can mine it out, turn it into fuel, basically have off Kerbin bases. We're going to play around with it a little bit on the moon, I think, but then our big our facility will be on Duna for our big project that we have going on there. Well, apparently I'm not going to hit anything on Carbon here in the near future here. Unless I get lucky while well, I'm telling you that I have no luck. Maybe, maybe. Doesn't look like it. So anyways, I'm going to launch another satellite into lunar orbit. And I'm going to do that off camera. I'll show you guys the map. Oh, there we go. There we go. I don't have to show you the map anymore. See? It's showing how much keythane is in each pocket here. And actually, it's, you notice the number is the same. It's because the pocket is all one bit. So it's counting everything in this pocket. So it's a pretty good sized pocket. And now we're back to the other one. So you basically let it go and scan the entire planet and you'll see all the different pockets. So with that, I'll meet you guys back after I launch that satellite for our last 
mission of the night. Alright guys, welcome back. Here we are on our way down. As you can see, if I bring up the grid here, I have done a lot of scanning and we are going to look at this pocket right here. Now I'm going to turn this back up. Actually, no. I'm going to leave it on. But I am on my way down with this guy. This is the upper stage of my rocket, obviously. So we will be ditching that very quickly as I run out of fuel in that tank right there. We should switch this to surface mode as we're coming down. But then this here is my little sky crane that I created with my little rover and I have no idea how this is going to work. So we're going to find out. But it's got lights! Um, oh yeah, there we go. I forgot that the L key does not do lights, it's the U key. So let's bring this over here. Don't slow me down. Ooh, my altitude above the terrain is very low. <laughs> this could be a very, very interesting. Oh, we should be okay. I want to get to here, which is in one minute. I need to be able to hit that area. So we'll just kind of wait just a touch. Watch the moon fly by. Wonder how close I'm actually going to get here. I'm a little worried at the moment. Can I speed up at all? I can. Okay, we should be in the keythane pocket now. We are close. Ooh slow ourselves down um, okay I gotta detach here decouple node um, oops this took off the solar panel by accident slowing down quickly and it looks like we are dropping into a very good area I actually really like this okay bringing this here nearby so that I don't have to look so far so you understand how the sky crane concept works right slow down as much as we can Three hundred meters. Need this to be vertical. There's our shadow. Lights on. Ten meters per second. Okay, we need to start floating now. Get this close enough. I'm gonna be almost hovering. Almost there, almost there. Oh boy. This has come down just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Attach. Perfect. And now I have no control of that because uh, there's no probe core on that. 
uh, bricks. Let's lock the bricks. Guess what, guys? We have a rover on the moon. Let's extend our panel here. This is so bright. Ah, we have a rover on the moon. And that's just gonna go away. So yeah, now we can take our time to explore. Uh, we we want to make sure to disable or lock the steering on these two middle ones. There we go. And we're going to find out how well this little guy runs. I have no idea how it's going to work. But we have a rover on the moon, guys. And uh, I have the blocking brake set, which is or the parking brake set. And I should be able to see. There it is. Kerbin. That is an awesome picture. So with that guys, I think we're going to leave it right about here. This thing is just going to keep going. Not much I can do about it, it's just going to fly. Because it's flying straight up though, I have a feeling it's uh, just going to go up and crash back down. But it's going to keep lifting faster and faster because it's burning the fuel out. Yeah, vertical speed is picking up 25 meters per second. What do you mean you can't switch under acceleration? Uh, well, I guess I'm stuck flying this guy. Or that guy's. Thanks for watching, and as always, take it easy.